In this video, I will talk about Power BI Premium, Pro and Free pricing level and help you choose the best one for your team. Now, I routinely work with business teams looking to evaluate and deploy Power BI. This could be within a small or medium or large organization. So my review is from that perspective of early adopter slash business user. So let's first talk about how were things before the change was announced. So this is what we had. We had two pricing levels, free and pro. And free had a set of functionality and pro extended that functionality and increased the limits uh, applied. And if you look at the business models of some other companies out there, take a look at Slack and Dropbox, it works pretty similar fashion. You get something for free, but then if you pay them a monthly fee per user, you get added functionality and increased limits. So that was not different, very different from what, what was out there. But Microsoft changed things up, and this was announced on May 3rd and made generally available on June 12th. And now we have these three pricing tiers. First of all, there's of course free and the biggest change there that it does not allow any sharing. Then we have pro, which is relatively unchanged, and then premium, which offers lower pricing for large user bases and additional benefits. But, Besides covering each of these in detail, I also want to talk to you about the best path that I would recommend you follow to deploy Power BI. Now let's pick it up from Power BI Pro. So it's essentially unchanged, offers all of the Power BI functionality as before and priced at $10 per user per month. This essentially sets the upper limit for Power BI pricing. So imagine if you have 1000 users in your organization, the most you will ever pay is $10 per user, which is $10,000 per month. So this is the upper limit, but with the introduction of new Power BI Premium, you could be paying lower. So Power BI Premium, that's what it offers. It offers lower pricing for large user base because of the capacity-based pricing. Now, these numbers come from the Power BI pricing calculator linked in the details and the specific numbers might change. But as you can see here, the general message is that the larger the organization, the greater the savings they may see compared to Power BI Pro. So that's great news. Now let's look at Power BI Free. Now when this was announced, this was explained in these terms that oh, we're simplifying the free Power BI service, yay. But as a great man once said, everything should be made as simple as possible, but not simpler. And I fear we've gone too far in this case because Power BI Free removes the ability to share. So if you're using Power BI Free and if you click on the share button, you would be given this prompt. You have to upgrade sharing, not allowed. And if you look at some of the companies we've seen earlier, I would say that their viral growth can be attributed to the ability of its users to freely share that experience with their friends, their colleagues. Now, I know that deploying Power BI, getting that toehold in your organization is so hard. It's like you're fighting to secure a beachhead. This puts in an added complexity because you, you're not allowed to share anymore. So let me give you the best path that I recommend you take to adopt Power BI, with, which would provide you the least amount of friction. Now, of course, we have seen Power BI free. We talked about that. It's very limited, so that's not what I would recommend. You have to get your teeth into Power BI Pro by one means or the other. Now, one path to that is the Pro Trials. This is great. So however many users are evaluating Power BI, they can sign up for the Pro Trial. Now, if you have been an existing Power BI user, you may be offered a 12-month trial. Look in the notification section when you log in to PowerBI.com. Otherwise, certainly the two month trial is available to all the users and you can just try that at any point of time. So this is one path you can take. Just sign up for the uh, two month trial and, and evaluate that and uh, within the organization. The next approach you can take is set up a shared pro account. Now, for this, what you're going to do is you're going to set up a single Power BI pro account. So essentially, you'll just be paying $10 per month. That's it. 
Uh, just a single account and you can set it up as, I don't know, proof of concept at yourcompanyname.com or something like that. And then you can simply share that amongst the uh, proof of concept team members, the team that is evaluating that. And even with this team, even though they're sharing a single account, they can set up separate workspaces to organize different reports and dashboards as they go about evaluating Power BI. Now, of course, at some point, you once the evaluation is complete, you would want to buy, go ahead and buy pro licenses for um, all the users. So this is the path that I recommend. You can start off with a free account with a very limited trial, and then you either use a shared pro account or evaluate using the pro trial. And when you're ready, I would recommend sign up for pro accounts for all the users who were involved, at least in the evaluation process, and then slowly roll it out. And if you're rolling out Power BI to a much larger user base, then you would consider premium. Power BI is an amazing tool and offers you tremendous value with or without the licensing change. So if you're still sitting on the fence, I would say don't. Go ahead, evaluate Power BI, and look to deploying it within your organization. Hey, keep watching more videos and keep learning Power BI. But if you did enjoy this video, I would love to hear from you. So leave a comment, like, subscribe, all the good stuff. Power on, my friends.